So I'm here with Matt Lieb, who is a writer and a comedian and host of Newsbroke on AJ Plus and also a member of The Chosen People. Now, Matt, from, mm. your, uh, from your vantage point across the pond, I'm just kind of wondering what you make of the recent fury over anti-Semitism and racism and leftism and all that kind of stuff. Well, I mean, it seems like it depends on uh, where you are. On, on your side of the pond, uh, as I've come to learn it's called, um, it seems like there is, I mean, you correct me if I'm wrong, but it, it seems like there is a kind of a smear campaign going on where um, Jeremy Corbyn and other anti-Zionist members of the Labour Party are being kind of just generally smeared as anti-Semites uh, by, it seems like, a lot of different uh, Jewish uh, mainstream institutions in the institutional community as well as the, the kind of mainstream body politic. Is that is that right, or yeah, or is there legitimate <laughs> is there legitimate issues of anti-Semitism happening? It's it's funny because I think there is a, there's a lot of levels on which you can appreciate on which you can appreciate this, um, and mm -hmm. untangling that is not something that the media has done particularly well because precisely right. tangling it has been quite a useful thing for people who do want to collapse those categories because that's kind right. of useful if you do support the state of Israel and want mm -hmm. to completely uh, erase the possibility of all criticism of it. And so there have right. been instances of anti-Semitism in the Labour Party because kind of, of course there have been because um, like right. it exists in society and society is anti-Semitic, mm -hmm. right? Um, right. And also there's a level in which, you know, people are scared. I don't know what the situation is for you, but like talking to, mm -hmm. Talking to relatives, talking to friends, um, people are genuinely scared of a rise in anti-Semitism, particularly in this kind of couched in the terms of like, oh, we were allowed to be white for seventy years, but they won't let us mm, like mm -hmm. they, we won't, they won't let us cling on for long, right? Um, right, right, right. And I just kind of I'm struggling to sort of pay adequate um, attention to those to those fears as genuine because they are genuine like right there is a rise in anti-semitism but i think that's kind of sure, mainly sure. down to or mainly being driven by far right elements that are kind right. of emboldening something that happens across society and then you get these like kind of sure. conspiratorial thinking so it kind of mm -hmm. there have been elements of smear but mm -hmm. um they're also to call it a smear campaign really kind of undersells the depth of the problem, which is we are kind of facing right. the rising rise of racism, right? Right, right. Yeah, I mean, I call it a smear because uh, I'm not entirely, uh, you know, up to date on what exactly the claims are. And I know that in the United States, uh, we do not have um, at all a robust uh, conversation about um, what is anti-Zionism and what is anti-Semitism and how uh, the two can be different and how the two can intersect. So um, out here, I would say, you know, we've got a, a big smear machine that looks at college campuses and says uh, there's a rise in anti-Semitism uh, by left-wing groups on campus, you know, like, uh, um, you know, uh, uh, if not now or, or uh, you know, a Jewish voice for peace, that somehow, uh, you know, Palestinian solidarity groups are automatically just uh, called anti-Semitic because they exist on campuses. And, uh, and so, yeah, out here, it definitely feels like there's more of a concerted effort by the institutional Jewish community uh, and by, you know, the basically entire right wing to smear left-wing people as anti-Semitic because of their views on uh, Israel-Palestine. Um, whereas, you know, the, it, what we do see out here in terms of the rise in anti-Semitism, what I have seen, is a huge rise in right-wing anti-Semitism uh, due to the rise of, you know, Donald Trump as president and the way he came to power, you know, kind of weaponizing a lot of these um, 
far right, um, you know, basically activists, uh, you know, from white identitarian movements to just kind of like right of, you know, different types of neoconservative movements that we've seen kind of like dog whistles before, but now we just see straight bullhorns. And this is such a kind of baffling historical moment to me because you're completely mm -hmm. right that there's a kind of comparable situation in the UK in the a lot of the sort of most well-respected, if you will, um, formal institutions of like Jewish civic life, like the Board of Deputies and that sort of thing, um, sure. who are very much, you know, behind this um, this discourse that there is this unique problem of um, anti-Semitism uh, in the Labour Party and in uh, left-wing thought in general, have formed this kind of uh, this sort of alliance with um, conservatives, which I don't know whether this is just my personal naivety mm -hmm. or my personal like biases, politically speaking, mm -hmm. but that seems like such an odd moment to me because these people are people, you know, as you say, mobilized by racism and anti-Semitism, mm -hmm. which is like the power of the, like the idea of Israel, which in gluing together these groups, which really, who really like shouldn't, they shouldn't be friends. They shouldn't be working together. And right. Yet, yeah. 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 You'd figure that, uh, you know, one of the things that people, uh, especially, you know, people, other Jewish people couldn't look past is the fact that, you know, these right wing groups and right wing leaders have so many Nazi supporters. You know, there, there's it, like being side by side with Nazis is just seems like a, you know, maybe an indicator that you might be on the wrong side of an issue. But that's just me personally. I have a certain distaste for Nazis, yeah. something about the, the haircuts mostly. But I mean, also just they don't really have style. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Nazis not adequately dapper, which is my main beef with them. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, they tried in the 40s to be dapper with the Hugo Boss and whatnot. But ever since, I mean, it's just they've gotten worse and worse from just the shitty boots to you, and know, you like the, the chinos, sometimes, uh, sometimes suspenders and some, you know, I, I guess they've lost the shave heads and now they're doing only the half shave. But to me, it just is like everything just looks very out of date. Um, anyways, uh, I, I do feel like the um, what it does say uh, you know, the, the fact that you see these weird alliances of, um, you know, uh, pro-Israel groups um, and pro, you know, right-wing neo-fascist groups is that Israel um, is more and more kind of accepting its role as a more and more fascist, imperialist type of state. And, and that, to me, uh, is something that needs to be you know, looked at and dealt with honestly, you know, and not not with, uh, you know, kind of a blanket name calling like, you know, I don't I definitely do not like when uh, people will say, oh, Israelis, uh, Netanyahu is a Nazi and whatnot, because I do feel like there there is uh, a kind of a, it's a much more sensitive issue than just like, oh, you know, we can, we call everyone Nazis. You know, it's a lot different, especially being that the state was literally created in the wake of Nazi atrocities. Um, there but are other ways to call do... people a bad person, right? You don't need yeah, to absolutely fascist. Fascist works. I feel like a fascist is, and that, and they, you know, a lot of them, uh, uh, especially on the far right in Israel, do not totally shy away from uh, their racism because they feel justified in it. And uh, I feel like the word fascist is, I think, a nice, you know, it's a succinct term for kind of uh, that side of politics um, of the political spectrum, especially with Likud party and, and other further right parties. Um, could, you, could you talk a bit more about that? Just say, explain why. Why I would categorize, well, just in terms of the, it's, it's not just in the, that they are fascist, but in that they're uh, kind of accepting more and more uh, the, that they are. <laughs> uh, more and more I see uh, open discussion about expulsion of Palestinians from 
uh, not not just from their the land which is currently occupied, but also um, you know stripping of of rights of uh, Arab Israelis. Um, you know more and more you're seeing just kind of an open discussion about disenfranchising the Arab population uh, within the legal borders of Israel. Not to mention the you know de facto apartheid you've got in. Uh, in the West Bank. So it, it, I think it's the fact that people are openly discussing it as a almost like it well, this is a legitimate, you know, uh, political platform to be just openly anti Arab uh, says to me that, uh, you know, it's become more and more clear that this is uh, a part of the body politic in Israel that has become kind of uh, energized and feels like they they have kind of some moral ground to stand on, whereas, you know, before there was at least some semblance, some, you know, uh, pretense of, oh, we would like to create two states. You know, the two state solution was this idea that was seen as this great compromise that we're working towards. If only, you know, the other side could, you know, be reasonable. But more and more, it's it's clearly impossible. And, and I don't even think they openly... Uh, advocate for it on the right too much anymore in in Israel. They uh, they are pretty much on the right, uh, you know, just for Greater Israel, which is uh, basically just a complete annexation of of the occupied territories. To me, that spells out uh, we have accepted we want to create this official apartheid state, and uh, that's something to look out for. I'm not a big fan of apartheid. <laughs> but, uh, you know, controversial apartheid, kind of bad I these know. days. Yeah, it's weird that these are controversial opinions, but, uh, you know, apparently they are. Apparently, it's weird. I think to, to, to point out the kind of political rather than, um, like, ethnic or religious underpinnings mm -hmm. that, like, organize that those motivations and organize the sort of political ambitions of the state of Israel, basically treating it as a state like any other state, which is kind of what we're supposed to be right. doing. Um, right. Uh, but, you know, makes much more sense of Netanyahu's attitude to really anti-Semitic uh, foreign leaders like Orban in Hungary and like right. Trump, because ultimately his, his loyalties don't lie with Jewish people per se. Like he's very happy to sell out people in the diaspora. But, you know, he, right, will, exactly. he will ally with his political allies because his political allies are far right nationalists with territorial ambitions and like fascist underpinnings. Those are the those are the like axes of solidarity between them, not whether or not they want to protect Jewish people because, you know. Right. Yeah. They will happily he will happily accept um, support from people who will happily accept support from people who you know, march through Charlottesville chanting, Jews will not replace us, which we will. Right. They are wrong. We will replace them. Yeah, I'm very excited to replace them. It's just, uh, you know, it's going to take a little while since we are less than uh, a percent of the population of the world. But eventually, we're getting there, you know, person by person. Yeah, um, imagine how much, like, yeah. orchestrating world finance we do when we're only, like, 1% of the population. It's kind of impressive. I know, I know. I know. I mean, I personally own five banks myself. So, you know, I, I hope you're carrying your weight and owning your Standards share of banks slipping. and media. Oh, oh good, good. <laughs> but yeah, I, I feel like, uh, you know, the kind of open embrace of fascism, you know, uh, or at least of, of other fascist regimes by uh, Netanyahu and, you know, Likudniks is is just to me is just kind of like the obvious the obviously where we were going this entire time it, it seemed like you know people talked about it and they were like well i mean that that would be ridiculous right i mean why would you know a state created uh by atrocities created you know by uh, fascists turn into a fascist state you know that seems a little bit uh you know, a little bit too much to handle but uh yeah no it's one of those things that's happening and uh and you know, people speaking out about it uh, have to deal with, um, I think, a lot of uh, a, a lot of ignorance. I think, uh, in the general population of of a lot of 
you know, of, at least of America, I feel like people don't really know what Zionism is. Um, and they have heard of anti-Semitism and their only examples of it had been for a long time, uh, you know, basically people calling something that's anti-Zionist anti-Semitic and going, oh, I guess that's people hating Jews. And then we have these open displays of anti-Semitism by the right and people need to find a way to, you know, kind of go you know, try, because no one wants to accept the idea that there's Nazis walking around on the streets. It just sounds so ridiculous. So people go like, well, what are, what are their, uh, what are these Nazis position on Israel? You know, <laughs> and it's like, if you happen to have a pro-Israel position, then they're like, well, I guess they, they're not, they can't hate Jews that much. And it's like, well, if you think about that, you know, that's, uh, it, it's hating Jews either way. Yeah, I mean, pr precisely because of the um, particular evangelical character of a lot of the, mm. you know, anti-Zionist, um, sorry, Zionist anti-Semitism um, in, in America and kind of in the UK, but not to the same extent. Like, they just, like, they like Israel because they don't want to have to deal with Jews in their own country. Mm -hmm. Right, exactly. It's literally going like, no, 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 put them all there. We love Israel. Just send them there. And then we can have our own white state. And, you know, it's, it's this weird, you know, kind of uh, ethno state fad that's really, uh, you know, it's uh, really hot right now. Everyone's really into the ethno state idea. And, you know, so it's kind of a perfect time for right wing Israeli politicians to be like, oh, you guys want an ethno state? Well, guess what? We're building one right here in the Middle East, you know? It's Here's just, what uh, I made earlier. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh, did you say ethno state? And then you pull one out. It's just, it seems like uh, to me, more and more people are kind of uh, learning about, um, I guess, the situation in the Middle East and uh, with regards to Israel, Palestine, but, but it still feels like the nuance of the discussion is, is still not there. And so you have um, and I, you know, I, I don't know for certain if that's the case in the UK, but you have people slipping up and definitely v having their anti-Zionism veer into anti-Semitism. And it's one of those things that needs to be uh, looked at and condemned when it happens and also understood as a learning curve. Because there is, a, you know, a, th there is a difference between people who legitimately um, want to see uh, you know, the end to the occupation um, and, and don't actually hold any hate in their heart towards, towards Jews um, and people who discuss Zionism and use the word Zionism as kind of like a code word for all the Jews, you know, and it's hard to untangle that. I mean, precisely because it's, um, there's a lot of, I guess, um, in terms of the like self promotion of like the Israeli state, they, it's kind of quite invested in collapsing those categories because oh sure you know like and I, it's just really frustrating when uh, when leftists who want to end the occupation just I mean essentially take Netanyahu's word for it that um, the interests of Jewish people are completely um, identified with the interests of the state of Israel, which is just like completely not. I mean like. Apart from the fact that most Jews don't even live in Israel, um, right. there are like many, many like you know, dissenting Jewish people there. Most like there are many people in and outside of Israel who are critical of like Israeli poli like policies. Right. And you know, there's a lot of you know, they're trading on a lot of very understandable historical fears, to, like in this promise that like you know we will keep you safe from future trustees, future holocaust, future pogroms, um, all you need to do is kind of like identify your interests with us. And like if we were to, you know, I guess like think about self-determination and what it would mean to combat anti-Semitism in a more holistic way, uh, in a more like diasporic way than just like shove them over there in the ethno state where they won't bother anyone and they can keep themselves safe. You know, right, that right. Would, like we wouldn't like encounter these problems so much. It's just like a real frustrating, I guess, failure of imagination on the part of of leftists. And you know, I have no doubt that there's some genuine hate there as well. But like, it's oh yeah, sure. 
Yeah, I mean, it's 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 a, it's such a weird thing too. This idea, you know, that's sold to uh, people that the Jewish people are better off um, all moving to Israel. You know, this idea that like first, you know, like you know, the thing about eggs is they're always safe if they're in one basket. You know, people <laughs> say always put your eggs in one basket. It's like the most ridiculous concept ever, and yet it's sold as like you know every time. Uh, you know, you hear the kind of the standard pitch of why you should move to Israel beyond it being the Holy Land is, uh, you know, this is the one place where Jews are safe. And it's like, well, you know, uh, it, it's uh, clear that, it, that, number one, that that is not true uh, because, you know, it is a, a literal uh, military state. I mean, you've got actual military everywhere. Uh, and I personally don't feel uh, safe with uh, people with the, you know, uh, M16s walking around everywhere. And, and also, yeah, it's, it, it completely discounts uh, the diaspora who are living safely in, I mean, you know, as someone who's lived in the United States my whole life, I feel pretty comfortable as a Jew. Even with Charlottesville, you know, I, I see that and I go, this is definitely scary and I don't you know put it past Americans for a second to not be like you know what we haven't done we haven't done a mass expulsion of Jews in a while we should try that that sounds like a lot of fun you know it's something that absolutely could happen but it's but uh but to uh act as if it's it's you know somehow safer to for everyone to move to Israel to me it just seems like I mean it just seems like a sales pitch to me you know and, and, and seems like you know it's not safer for like Mizrahi Jews or like you know like right. North African Jews who are like right experience a lot of violence and a lot of um a lot of marginalization within the state of Israel as Jewish Israelis it's like yeah, okay, yeah. there are like the other levels going on there even if it was a state of just uh, Ashkenazi white European Jews, it would still not be that. Sa- I don't feel comfortable at the dinner table with my own family all the time. I don't feel totally safe. I, you know, <laughs> like the idea that like, oh, if we're all the you know exact same skin color and we're all you know the exact same religion, uh, you know, we're in, we're in the safest place we can be. And it's just like you know, this is come on. I mean, it's just it's antithetical to literally. Uh, my entire life experience and I think the life experience of most Americans you know which is like you know diversity is a thing diversity you know most Americans we you know we live in we live in uh, cities and diversity has not been uh, at least for me a negative experience but then again I've never lived in an all uh, all white you know town or something like that where where you know maybe if I'd grown up that way I'd feel feel differently but I just don't it's to me it's antithetical to to everything that uh I've been taught and everything that I grew up with and I grew up with conservative parents you know so you know if if I feel like diversity is a good thing I mean shit everyone should but maybe I'm wrong but that's what I think but yeah. I think this kind of um discussion around um like safety in Israel sort of is illuminating of the way in which like the category of Zionism or like the idea of Zionism is often mm-hmm. um, confused with, uh, I guess, like the concrete reality of Zionism as instantiated in right. like, the current Israeli state. Because there have been many right. different, there have been many different strains of Zionism. Exactly. That I, you know, and like many of them have been like liberal and progressive or whatever. Mm-hmm. And you can you can say that you know those are like you know, structurally inadequate or flawed, you can disagree with them, but they weren't, you know, we just can't say that, like, all Zionisms have always been about establishing this, like, apartheid. Right. Like, it's just not true and it's not helpful. But um, Right, I completely agree. Yeah, and there is this sense, however, in which, like, they, uh, like, government, like, uses this idea of, like, Zionism is uh, something that was set up to, or something that is intended to, confer a certain mm. level of like safety on Jewish people and just kind of um, use that to claim that, to make the historically completely inaccurate claim that Israel mm-hmm. was set up by Jews in order to keep Jews safe, which I mean, again, right. is like just an enormously impressive effort on the part of, you know, British people in particular to like not talk about colonialism. We hate talking about right. colonialism because it's like, 
yeah. you know, that's the thing that's missing from this debate is that when we talk right. about the founding of, you know, the founding of Israel, you know, it's mm -hmm. not Jewish refugees who set it up. It's like, you know, mm -hmm. white guy colonialists um, and right. in the post-war government who, you know, like all kinds of reasons, like they wanted military bases, their empire was crumbling, they were going through all mm -hmm. these like styles of like semi like post-colonial management. Like that's why it was set up, not by Yeah, Jewish it was people. Burning Man for some of them. Some of them were just thought it was it was basically Burning Man. They were like, you know, I'm gonna go there, I'm gonna have a killer time, <laughs> I'm gonna set up some, you know, grow some fucking oranges, dude. They'll be hella ripe. It'll be good. Well, yeah, we'll live, you know, and, uh, you know, it's not to say that, you know, uh, many of them didn't want to live uh, in, in peace with their, with their uh, Arab neighbors. It's just, uh, but, it, you know, the idea that it was like, this is where we must go in order to be safe as if it was kind of like foretold the, uh, you know, the Holocaust happening eventually, you know, that's kind of the story that's been sold. And it's like, well, they were right this whole time. Uh, and, uh, you know, there's, you know, the entire aspect of, of the fact that it was, uh, in essence, a colonial project is completely wiped from, you know, the, the discussion of the creation of the state. And so when you don't have that, you know, picking on Israel as, you know, picking on Israel will look like, um, oh, you're picking on a, you know, uh, uh, someone's safe space. You know, that's, it looks like, well, this is where all the refugees had to, they had to go somewhere. And it's like, yes, this is true, but this is not the impetus for the creation of the state. You're conflating the two things and it's not the same. But yeah, I mean, these are discussions that, uh, you know, are hard to have, I think, with most people, uh, because you are kind of, uh, you know, it's 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 even for people who know about it, it's it's a hard. No one really wants to die on that hill of like of of defending the Palestinian people. No one wants to die on that hill. It seems like too too much of a risk. It's like why, especially in America. I think where you know people are uh, a lot of people are so invested, especially on the on the left in um, you know so many of our own problems, you know, so to speak, in in this country, uh, you know, people feel like it's just another thing happening in another country, and I don't want to delegitimize de my own movement by you know talking about palestinians marching with them you know marching with their banners and and it's uh you know it's a it's a bummer because i mean a bummer is <laughs> it's, a, it's a real bummer i'm from it's california bummer, yeah. that to me a bummer is uh that's like that's that's real high up there in terms of tragedy uh uh it is you know because uh these are real life uh atrocities you know we're seeing the real, I, I mean, I don't want to say the beginnings because it's been happening for a while, but we are seeing the kind of coming to fruition of a apartheid state happening. And, and you know, it's de facto, like I've said before, it's de facto apartheid now, but, you know, if greater Israel were to happen, uh, it would be an apartheid state uh, you know, unless of course they were like you know they did a turn all of a sudden there's m night Shyamalan twist where they do a one state solution and everyone gets voting rights then i'd be like that's amazing and no expulsions okay but that you know prove me wrong maybe what's that yeah right exactly uh i mean that that would be interesting but you know that's it's that's not what the plan is, and uh, yeah, it's it's definitely hard to to get people interested in it, and to you know to put their bodies and their minds on the line for you know for this, and, you know. But I feel like yeah. it sounds kind of almost crank um, to mm -hmm. to sort of repedal the lines we were talking about. Not we. I was like, I was like eight, but like in like two thousand and two or two thousand and three, mm -hmm. when, like around the time that the Iraq War was happening, um, talking right. about like how these kinds of um, these policies in the Middle East aren't, you know, this kind of like distant moral battleground that like Western leftists use to like you know signify their like moral virtue. They're actually bound mm -hmm. up with. Um, 
like Western imperialist foreign and domestic policy in terms of you know, securing military bases, securing access to certain resources like water and oil in the area. It kind of is about, you know, gas and oil. Um, and I mm -hmm. feel like that, you know, again, when we return to like the material and political realities, the, the kind of the cracks in this sort of media war to like collapse Zionism and anti and like protection of Jewish interests and anti-Zionism and mm. anti-Semitism just begin to show because when you think like actually this isn't you know it's not about protecting like a small minority of the global population it's about right. protecting a global majority of um, the world's resources right 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 yeah I mean you know uh, if it, you know, if we, if you can even get that far in the discussion with people about what what the purpose uh, of uh, America's unconditional support of Israel is, you know, uh, if you can get that far, then 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 great. But most people, you know, they 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 can't push themselves that far. It just it's just the conversation dies uh, on the vine because it's. Uh, you know, either because you've got preconceived notions, because, you know, you've got a lot of conspiratorial people um, on the right and on the left, too, where, you know, there's uh, 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 definitely anti-Semitism rears in and you've got, you know, so it's, it's, so it's hard to talk about because, you know, I'm always afraid when I'm talking to someone who I, you know, don't know fully um, and, you know, and all of a sudden they start repeating anti-Semitic tropes about Israel's actual actual power, and they'll 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 you know talk about how Israel calls all the shots, and you're just like, okay, okay, calm down. It, let's let's erase some of your pre-programming here, uh, and uh, you know it, there's there's kind of uh, yeah. So it's it's it, and it's hard to get that far because the person you're talking to might think like, oh. It, are you about to say some weird anti-Semitic conspiracy theories? You know, so everyone kind of wants to avoid the subject because, you know, you're never sure what somebody's going to say. And, you know, meanwhile, uh, you know, uh, IDF soldiers are shooting Palestinian, unarmed Palestinian civilians. Yeah, it's, it's, it feels sort of odd that, like, those kind of really brutal political realities end up being wrangled out by like really awkward dinner conversations with like your yeah. aunt who um has this you know hasn't really thought through her attitude to foreign policy or whatever but is you know has this nostalgic idea of israel because she like w had a nice summer there when she was 19 something like that right exactly yeah and like uh, you know like you say it's uh people's definitions of zionism uh, seem to to range, you know, like it, 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 people talk about, you know, the different strains of Zionism uh, that that cropped up, and to them, you know, if you if you are to describe Zionism as this racist imperialist project, they're like, what are you talking about? You know, this all Zionism is is a safe home for the Jewish people, and you know, and and so it's like. Yeah, it, these conversations don't happen because uh, people get stuck on uh, definitions and they get, uh, you know, it's like uh, the, the semantics of the conversation uh, get entangled immediately. Y even the word Zionism, you can't, people can't get past that word because, you know, of the you know, ranging definitions of it and the assumptions and, and it's, uh, yeah, it's 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 not good because we we've got to be able to discuss the realities on the ground of what Zionism is versus the kind of like nebulous, you know, theoretical what Zionism, you know, could have been or, you know, whatnot or the, you know, what the wishful thinking. Uh, so, yeah, it's uh, yeah, this it, it's hard. Yeah, the reference to um, the. Uh, plurality of um, historical ideas of Zionism's plural um, mm -hmm. as, a, right. as a kind of get out clause to avoid talking about what um, Zionism looks like in the contemporary state of Israel is you know, it's this classic right. retreat to language that, you know, 
a lot of people do because they don't want to talk about the thing that makes them uncomfortable. It's the whole, um, like, right. is, you can't be Islamophobic. Islamophobia isn't racism. Islam is a religion, right, right, right. not a race. Right. Yeah, and on the on the other side, it's the uh, it's the people who are like, uh, I can't be uh, anti-Semitic because I myself am I have uh, Semitic origin, and therefore, and, and it's like you know, it's these, these semantic arguments where they're, you're completely useless. They're only used to muddy the point that's happening. You know, it's uh, it, it's used to stifle conversation so that you can't actually you know confront. The actual issue, uh, you know, set before you. I mean, this happens to, to me all the time. I I'm uh, a member of uh, several different uh, uh, Facebook groups that are Jew book groups, giant, you know, Facebook groups filled with just Jews, and uh, and the arguments that that we have, uh, most of the arguments that, that I have are are people like uh, when I posted, I did a video for AJ Plus about. Uh, um, uh, anti-Zionism and anti-Semitism. Uh, it was a video about how we are now living in a point where you can uh, love Israel and hate Jews at the exact same time. And, uh, you know, the way people were choosing to not discuss that issue was go, oh, well, you work for Al Jazeera. Al Jazeera is, you know, uh, funded from the Qatari government. You're basically a uh, Qatari shill, you might as well be Hamas. And it's like, you know, it, it, people That's a lot of steps do there, anything. my friend. I know, it's, it's a lot of steps, but, uh, you know, hey, you can't prove that I'm not Hamas, but, uh, you know, I, uh, that's, that's what they say. And, and uh, you know, there's a lot of creative ways that people have uh, learned in order to kind of uh, not discuss an issue, and I feel like with this issue in particular, there's a million ways not to talk about it. And, uh, and there's a million reasons not to talk about it because people feel uncomfortable with it. Um, which is uh, not good. And also that kind of the way of not talking about it properly also, I, I guess, is one of the functions of this like tangle discursive. And it strikes me that um, those like tactical diversions in order to not talk about the thing is precisely one of, yeah. I guess, the functions, the ways in which um, the appearance of combating anti-Semitism is used. And that's to mm. um, essentially embolden Islamophobia because there is this kind of, you know, this mm -hmm. racist stereotype that um, most Muslims are anti-Semitic simply by right. virtue of being Muslim. So like, you know, right. being Jewish becomes this kind of like protected category within whiteness right. and like defending mm -hmm. that category mm -hmm. becomes a pretext for, you know, loads of like really like anti-black, anti-Muslim mm -hmm. and uh, Islamophobic mm -hmm. racisms. Um, right, yeah. The, the Jews are uh, used by uh, white people in order to uh, justify their own hatred of people of color all the time. Any issue, any issue, you know, uh, you can be like, well, you know, the problem with the blacks is they hate the Jews, says the guy who probably hates Jews. You know, like, it's, it's, it's just... And uh, that's my thing. It, yeah, exactly. If anyone's hating Jews around here, it's me. Um, yeah, it, it's, it's, to me, an obvious ploy. Like, it's, it's obviously uh, a, a strategy uh, employed by, you know, right-wingers in order to... Uh, to divert from their own, you know, uh, coming to terms with their blatant racism. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's, I feel like uh, there's something about being within the tent of whiteness uh, in the institutional Jewish community that's seen as the safest place you can be. It's, and so they're going like, even if that means allying ourselves with people who just two decades ago openly hated our guts. They're now accepting us and trying to protect us. And hey, you know what? Uh, if, if that means not speaking up about blatant racism, 
uh, in our own community and in, in, in the white community in general, then fine. As long as we stay white, we're fine. And I think we've learned that like that whiteness is conditional. And, uh, and so it's, it's, you know, at least with the, the rise of Trump and everything like that, you've got people for the first time ever, uh, I've got people saying that I am not white, which, uh, you know, just, you know, when I first heard that, I, I was, I got real mad, I got real white about it too. I was <laughs> like my monocle fell off and everything. How dare you? You know, and you know, I, you know, I've, I feel like I am white, you know, I bleed mayonnaise and I shit one star Yelp reviews, but you know, <laughs> apparently, apparently I'm don't count anymore. Uh, and, and it's, it's interesting because you're seeing a lot of different reactions to that. You know, what does it mean that, you know, these white nationalists are, are now holding whiteness so precious that we don't count anymore, uh, as, as white people, what do, what do we do? And, you know, I think, uh, the, a, a lot of the institutional Jewish community is going, going to have to make some decisions about, uh, about where they put their allegiance. And, and if in America, if you continue to ally yourself with Israel as you know the voice of the Jewish people and the homeland is the Jewish people, you're gonna end up uh, with a lot of strange bedfellows now. And if you can accept that, then, you know, mazel tov, but I, I, I personally uh, cannot accept that. And uh, I don't think anyone should accept that because who the hell wants to sleep next to a Nazi? I mean, that's the kind of the character of the um, some of the fear that I'm mm -hmm. seeing um, amongst the uh, like British jury, if you like, British, mm -hmm. you know, Ashkenazi jury, right. if you say, because it's that fear of like losing um, one's place in like mm -hmm. in the whole of whiteness, which means that because I mean, that tells us a lot about um, the wages of whiteness, both as like a material reality, mm -hmm. because, you know, like the structural uh, institutional Islamophobia and anti-black racism and that kind of thing. It just is, mm -hmm. is institutional and material in the way that anti-Semitism isn't anymore right. in the UK right, right, right. now. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, it tells us a lot about the power of whiteness in uh, uh, including you in the sort mm -hmm. of the institutions of social life and all these like you know amazing benefits that comes from being white being white is great you don't get harassed by the police generally it's brilliant right um right like of course people don't want to lose that right because we're, we're told that right. the only way to access those kinds of like mm -hmm. what should be like basic criteria of like living mm -hmm. in any society the right to housing the right, right exactly. to not be like shot on the street the only way mm -hmm. to access that is to be white right and you can kind of understand when people are like holy shit like we've been we're white now this is brilliant everybody stay calm mm -hmm. do whatever you can in order yeah. to remain white and that's kind of right. feels like what's happening particularly when you know there are a lot of um, Jewish people who, you know, rightly speak up against, like, you know, the very reactionary anti-migrant policies we have and mm. uh, uh, massive Islamophobia. But, you know, a lot of people will, you know, stay silent on that because they don't see themselves as allied because to mm -hmm. see themselves as allied would be to see themselves as, as not white. And that's something, that's something no one wants to be. Yeah, I mean, you get worried that at some point, you know, if you're if you're too loud, uh, you're somehow going to fall into this, you know, uh, Jewish category, the stereotype of you know, uh, loud mouth, you know, left wing socialist Jew, and 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 all of a sudden you're, you know, setting your yeah. By the way, <laughs> uh, you're you know you're it's as if it's some sort of you know, backsliding uh, in status for uh, the Jewish people. And, you know, often, as I think it is with, with anyone who is of a particular, you know, uh, category of people outside the norm, you are the representative of all those people. And so, you know, your actions aren't just looked at as your own individual beliefs, but, you know, as, as all, 
all Jews. This is bad for all the Jews if you're, you know, speaking up about this stuff, especially when, you know, uh, the the people you're defending are, you know, uh, Muslims who hate us. And, you know, it's all this, like, this racism comes out when you... Uh, you know, it's within our own community when when these issues are brought up, and you know, uh, and you know, I, I I'll admit that I've I've definitely um, prefer I definitely prefer to have those conversations um, in Jewish spaces rather than the general public because I feel like you know the the general public likes to you know discuss the racism of other. Uh, people, you know, not their own, their own, you know, group. So you have white people talking about, uh, you know, racism within the Jewish community and not discussing their own. And I, I just, it's one of those places where I feel safer talking about it as like an, an inter-community issue. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, we, we definitely uh, benefit uh, from, being white we have white privilege we 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 reach all the material markers of being white we get um just by the the way we look and kind of the acceptance of of jews uh you know uh the recent acceptance of jews in in western society <laughs> uh and it's uh it's not something that people feel like they want to give up and it's not something that uh uh you know it, yeah it just it, it's it's a very powerful thing white supremacy very powerful and uh it's it's gonna take a lot of work um in order to uh i think get our own community woke on white supremacy uh Especially, first you're going to have to teach them what the word woke means. Um, and, you know, then you teach them the rest. But, but yeah, it's, it's definitely uh, the material gains from whiteness. Uh, and, it, you know, is just, it's like incalculable. It's just uh, you, we get to live as, you know, uh, normal, quote unquote. You know, if you are a white Ashkenazi uh, Jew, um, you know, or white passing Jew of any, of, of, of any kind. And, uh, yeah, it's, um, it's I mean, the, hard. The, that kind of like the, the wages of whiteness, um, are precisely mm -hmm. why I'm so, I'm so confused when people are like, there's this tiny global minority who are controlling mm -hmm. an enormous amount of the wealth and power. And they have these elites mm -hmm. who, um, form these institutions in order to keep power and wealth amongst themselves. I'm like, yeah, it's called right. white people. Like, it's right, true. yeah, it's, it, yeah, it's, it's always the most insane thing that the, I, I like to picture the, the, the people in the room, you know, t uh, in the like smoky, smoky room in the, in the thirties, forties, you know, uh, a bunch of white men smoking cigars, you know, captains of industry masters of the universe just going like man the jews control everything and it's just <laughs> like you are literally controlling everything you know, like <laughs> you will you will not allow jews in your club <laughs> it's 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 crazy it's craziness but um, you know i mean i think all racism is 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 insanity basically but it's also you know sometimes your uh, society breeds you to be insane that's a fun little thing that happens uh but yeah yeah i mean whiteness in general and whiteness is is such a it's another hard concept i think to to kind of talk about with people because you do have people who are you know, white people who are ignorant of their own privilege have the hardest time discussing and facing uh, the concept of whiteness because they, having lived with it, don't realize the benefits that they, they get just from being white. And so, you know, all they see it as is an attack on them uh, personally and a racist attack that's that's how they look at it you know you are an anti-white racist and you know I it, to me it's a obviously a laughable concept and that I literally laugh about it 
once a day. Uh, but it is, it's an understandable thing if you uh, are not taught, a, 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 you know, if you don't have a kind of like a robust discussion or an education uh, on race in America. You're not going to learn uh, about any of the, the benefits. And so all you hear is people being mean, mean to you on the internet. And it's, it's crazy how, how much that, that affects people. Um, and, you know, I, I, do, I do find myself, you know, wanting to educate people in comment sections where I'm like, you know, I want to like just, just teach them, you know, about whiteness, but I, I have to stop myself because I don't have the t so much time in the day to do it. But, you know, people who are very sensitive to the, this idea that there's such thing as white privilege, you know, and, and, you know, I feel like, uh, it's such a simple concept to me, but to some people, it's just, they, they won't, they won't hear of it, you know, and if you can't even have a, discussion about it then you can't get anywhere with it and and then you just have you know the cycle continues i mean you have discussions like you we're having at the moment in the uk where you know yeah like people are talking about racism a lot without mm -hmm. any kind of um material understanding of what it means to be white which is a kind mm -hmm. of confusing uh, a confusing presumption because what you're talking about is something that is, you know, excluded from this like normative category of power um, without wanting to face up to or talk about that category in and of itself. Mm -hmm. And it just means that you uh, yeah. get like really, really bad faith, frustrating discussions like the ones that have dominated yes. the uh, the last six months. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, it's every argument is now starts off in bad faith. No one is having uh, any discussions from different sides of the political spectrum uh, in which w w the two opposing ends don't believe that they want to disenfranchise each other, you know, it's, it, it, you know or in some way are lying to each other or some way are, uh, are part of some sort of cabal of people who are trying to se secretly replace them. So it's it's a it's a bad place to start any discussion. And you know, personally, I think that like we have a lot of potential allies and kind of uh, in in uh, you know I hate to say this as a, as a socialist, but as uh, I, I feel like liberals can get woke on this shit. I don't feel like, uh, you know, there's a lot of, I, I, I love to make fun of liberals. It's one of my favorite, it's the best, it's one of my favorite things to do. But they are, I think they're infinitely closer to uh, having a kind of a understanding of whiteness and an understanding of race discourse than people on the right who I feel like, you know, at this point it's like, once you start allying with Nazis and once you, you know, start, you know, waving their banners around, I just go like, I don't think I'm going to get through to most of these people. Um, but, uh, you know, I do feel like uh, we, you know, it's just organizing and is, is, is the only way to do it. Organizing and, and educating and, and getting people to understand why we make fun of liberals so much, you know, because... Uh, <laughs> Uh, but, uh, and, and I do think that uh, one of the things that uh, we have to offer uh, as socialists that, that liberals do not have to offer, um, uh, that they can get woke on, is uh, the capitalism's role in white supremacy and how the two are, are linked. And, uh, you know, the kind of erasure of uh, the, you know, any critique of capitalism from any of these conversations is I think what gets us back into kind of like these you know bad faith conversations where where no one believes that anyone has anyone's best interest in mind or is not trying to mislead them in some way you know uh, having a robust critique of capitalism when discussing race and anti-semitism and Israel Palestine I think is very important 
for most people to understand because you know everyone understands you know money and everyone understands capitalism and how it works <laughs> uh, or at least for some aspect of it um, yeah, we, we live yeah. through it like we kind of experience like we have like a, right, has a exactly. physical experience of it in the way that not everyone right, has yeah. physical experience of like racism or what it is to I don't know like live in Gaza Right, exactly. But we do understand uh, that we all have bosses and our bosses seem to care more about making money than they do uh, the welfare of their employees uh, for most people. So, you know, having these discussions and just kind of extrapolating that concept and thinking of it, uh, thinking of it even bigger, you know, now consider countries and geopolitics and how capitalism uh, is kind of, uh, uh, you know, critiquing capitalism might help you understand it further. Um, but, you know, m my dad would hate me having this conversation. He is a libertarian. I, I, I promise I won't tell him. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Your secret is safe with me. Okay, good, good, good. Matt Lieb, thank you so much for joining us. Um, Thanks so much for having me.